good to see our smart mobility space that crowded and I know why because we have a very interesting topic and we have great speakers so um, everyone who can hear me maybe also in the back and um, join now because we will start um, and talking about in-car payment what happens when mobility and commerce merge and um, I would like to introduce you to my colleague Andreas Prats, who is the most passionate guy I know in our whole organization when it comes to digital payments. And um, I want to leave the stage very quickly and early because um, I hand it over to you. You are the expert and I just want to wish you a lot of fun and good talks. Thank you, Marie-Louise. Well, the experts are actually coming now on stage. <laughs> uh, welcome with me a actually great panel, I think, because you have uh, participants and contributors from the most relevant parties to everything around mobility payments. Welcome with me, Peter Obejic, goes by order, Stefanie Posner, Peter is from Mastercard, Stefanie from Mercedes Pay, Kilian Thalhammer of Deutsche Bank, and Uli Kindl of Ride. What relates each of you to mobile payments, to in-car payments? Uli, maybe you want to have a go. Yeah, um, uh, yeah I'm Uli from uh, Ride, and we have built a uh, payment platform for automotive OEMs, so they can um, offer in-car payments for um, uh, vehicle-related services, such as fueling, uh, car wash, or EV charging. Kilian. Yeah, I think the easy, the easy answer to your question is there is no payments without a bank. So that's my, my obvious link to, mm -hmm. to payments. So we, our job is to make it work in the, in the background uh, that everybody receives what he or she deserves at the end, the money. And that's, that's our link. And that's the interesting thing when these more or less basic infrastructure comes together with a special use case like in-car payment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as the company name already says, um, Mercedes Pay is uh, the um, payment company inside the Mercedes Group, which means we bundle the payment industry expertise at Mercedes Pay and also enable all the payments in the Mercedes Pay uh, in the Mercedes uh, Group ecosystem all over the world. Yeah, and as many of you may know, MasterCard is a sort of medium-sized fintech that's focusing on payments, and it's our mission to make payments smart, safe, and secure all over the world, and cars are becoming an increasing part of that, and obviously the greatest cars in the world come from Germany, so it's clear that we're focusing on this topic right here. <laughs> Thank you all. To look a little bit at the future, and actually first uh, a step to the past. I think the first time I looked deeply into mobility-related payments uh, was in 2005 or six around fleet cards. I think we have come a very long way since. Uh, and let's have a quick look uh, with a short video on the future of urban mobility. How do we get from A to B? In today's evolving cities, the answer isn't always straightforward there are more options than ever for moving through our urban spaces. But finding the right one, the one that gets people where they need to go, when they need to be there, and for the right price, isn't always as easy as it should be. Transportation is as complex and as diverse as the cities it serves, but travelers need simple, seamless, and reliable options. At MasterCard, we're working with our partners to pioneer a frictionless future for urban mobility. A future where people use the tools they already have to make navigating the urban environments effortless. MasterCard is already processing billions of mobility transactions every year, playing a key role in the evolution of public, private, and automotive mobility. We're finding new ways to improve urban mobility experiences, even as those experiences continue to become more varied. For public transport, we're helping drive down the cost of revenue collection while delivering a simplified experience for riders. In private mobility, we're eliminating both barriers to entry and helping to speed riders on their way. And with automotive, we're seizing the opportunity of connected vehicles to digitize traffic payments in and around cities. However people choose to move around urban environments, we're building scalable and seamless solutions for mobility operators and the people they serve so that getting from A to B can be as easy as ABC. So, Peter, maybe 
for us as citizens that somehow came here this morning by bike, by subway, maybe by car, uh, probably not by Ubercopter yet. Uh, what revolution in the experience do you foresee, um, also do you globally with a MasterCard perspective see um, between now and say in five years? <coughs> Yeah, I mean, five years or, or 20 years, it's, it, re it really is a question of, of your perspective, right? I guess it depends on who you ask, but um, according to some pundits, by 2050, we can expect two-thirds of people to live in urban centers. So I think it's our mission as, as large companies, global companies, to worry about making that much more efficient, enjoyable, and even feasible. And, and a big part of that is obviously the experience of you know, how I interact with the ecosystem. That includes payments. Uh, I think it's no accident that the panel is configured today in exactly the way it is, because that will require a lot of innovation, and innovation doesn't happen in a vacuum. So as we move to a seamless wor world, we need to sort of collaborate together and bring the best that we can offer um, uh, to the citizens uh, on, this, on this planet, basically, to, to give them a better life. Maybe directly to Uli, because at first sight, one could say, are you actually competitors? And I mean, I could ask the same question to Kilian. Mm -hmm. You offer a solution that I can, as a consumer, I can use in an app to pay for my fueling, electric charging, etc. You offer card-based solutions as uh, MasterCard with the banks. Um, so why should MasterCard partner with you or vice versa? Yeah. No, first of all, we're not competitors. We're working very closely together. Um, as you mentioned, yes, we, as Ride, we have an app for end customers where they can basically uh, do in-car payments no matter which brand they're using. Uh, and here, obviously, we work with MasterCard as a payment method and also use some of their gateway services. Um, and at the same time, we're working closely with uh, Mercedes-Benz and others to provide our, our solutions also for native in-car payments. Uh, to enable the cases uh, that I mentioned already, digital fueling. So you basically only drive up to the forecourt, to the gas station. You click on, for example, pump four, and then you, you fill in gas and you can drive away because it's already paid for. And if you think about, for example, car wash, uh, which where the process now is really complicated, you drive up to the forecourt, you walk in, you pay, you get a code, you go back to your car, you, dr you drive back to the car wash, you put in the code, you go back to your car and drive in. And this is where we actually can bring also a lot of value to really simplify these processes, where you just pay your ticket basically out of your car, in car, in a Mercedes-Benz, for example, and you basically can only drive in. And this is where really a lot of value comes to the table. So, Stephanie, I mean, the word was already there. How does Mercedes enable all of this in a seamless experience across the fleet and, I don't know, maybe beyond? Yeah, thank you. So, um, first question for me is always, why do we need in-car payment? And as uh, Mercedes, uh, we develop um, several services which ease your life with your Mercedes, make it even more comfortable or more exciting. So, our software packages, um, for example, or make it less exciting, <laughs> just an example. Um, you know, I, I al always have cars with a quite big engine because I have horses and need to pull horse trailers. And I have a nephew, he's 18 years old, so has his driving license in some weeks. And um, what did he do? He asked me if he can lend my car. Uh, to go uh, with um, his mates to a concert, and I was thinking, oh my god, he has his driving license since, I don't know, three weeks, and he wants to drive with my car with, I don't know, around 300 PS. Um, so, I was really glad that my um, fabulous colleagues from research and development um, at Mercedes-Benz developed a software package with, which is called um, beginning driver's mode, and you can purchase this one directly in the car um, from the Mercedes Me store, and once you activate it, um, the speed is limited of the car, also the acceleration is much smoother than the car would be able to do, and you can't um, disable the EPS. And so I purchased this one, paid it directly from in the car, and I was quite sure that my nephew will come back in one piece from his uh, concert visit. So this is one thing which um, is, I would say, 
really great to can uh, to purchase it directly in the car. And the other, uh, Uli already mentioned, is uh, fueling, parking. These are use cases which could be purchased in car. And how does in-car payment work? So our classical in-car payment is you can purchase from the store what you would like to have. And um, you have your credit card data at your Mercedes Me profile. So you can use uh, your card data for purchasing. And for the second factor, you need uh, in, in the European region, um, in the classical way, you need your um, smartphone. And um, just scan a QR code from your um, in-car head unit uh, in order to authorize the payment. Um, but what do, did we do? You already mentioned native uh, in-car payment. And this is something we released in March this year. Um, so we, we eliminated this media break with using the smartphone for authorizing the payment um, and enabled um, the in-car payment to be used um, with a biometric factor, um, namely the fingerprint with a fingerprint sensor. So which means even if you forgot your smartphone, um, you are able to purchase um, as of now um, goods from the Mercedes Me store and uh, software services. And um, um, in the near future, you can also fuel your car with native in-car payment. So, and I hope you don't forget your finger at home. So, in that very moment that I'll do that on my uh, car entertainment system directly, driving at a traffic light, maybe not driving, maybe at the traffic light, <laughs> or automatic in the future, I would not consider using my bank anymore because it's happening directly. Uh, so, Kilian, <laughs> you represent the bank today. You have a much more <laughs> broader and wider view of the industry, obviously. But how does this change uh, the landscape of digital payments? Also the landscape itself will, will, uh, will be changed to such development, but not the, not the, the element of the bank. Yeah? Because it's, you see the front end and you see different type of authentication and two factors and things like that, but you need somebody in the back who accepts that authentication. Yeah? Because the authentication, the reason for that is that somebody take the risk yeah? and somebody process the payment, which is not the car manufacturer, which is, not, which is not MasterCard, which is not right, which is at the end the bank. Yeah? So and this is where you need really a clear close collaboration between the front-end owning part of in-car payments or mobility payments, which is m mostly with the OEM, uh, so, and the back-end provider. Because if we said, um, friendly speaking, we don't care about a fingerprint, there will be no payments, uh, if it's our card, uh, so it's as yeah. in banks in general. And I think that is, that is the important point. How will the digital landscape change, or the digital paymentscape change over time? I think the focus will more come into user experience, uh, so really to make the process and the use case as convenient as possible, because I think that is key. Uh, so we can all think about uh, a fancy use cases, and that's maybe good to have a car wash use case or a fueling use case and things like that. If it's not ready for the masses, uh, there will be there will no in-car payments in the future. And as that's exactly the role where the biggest need is uh, towards the end consumer. And this is where I see also an interesting field who will own that? Who will help that? Is there a bank role? Maybe. Is there a Mercedes payroll? Payroll? Maybe. Is there a MasterCard role or a right role? We will see. Mm -hmm. I think maybe if I can double down on that, uh, you know, what you were saying in the beginning, ultimately it's all a question of trust in the ecosystem, right? So there needs to be the trust by the customer that their payment will actually be executed. The merchant needs to have the trust that they will get their money. And the bank needs to establish a relation of trust with, for instance, somebody like Mercedes, who is providing the infrastructure uh, that is ultimately enabling the payment. The glue that's put, put, that puts all of that together is the same glue that's already providing the trust today uh, uh, in physical and digital payments all over the world, which is sort of the role of a scheme, uh, which is why we take a keen interest in the space. Uh, and, don't, and don't forget about the other side. Payments is always two-sided. Yeah? Without the merchant, the end consumer cannot pay. Yeah? And the more use cases we have, the more merchants we have into, into that world. Yeah? And the role of the bank is also somehow to bring these two aspects together. Because if the merchant is not getting his or her money, then there's also no income payment. And I think this role and this key player in this ecosystem is often forgotten because you cannot see the merchant. Maybe a question that is a little bit going into the detail of the solutions that you currently develop and already offer. Um, 
uh, where you, as you said, Stephanie, you eliminated the need for a second device, for a mobile phone or something to actually go to the app, authorize the payment, then it's uh, again uh, uh, the software package, the young driver's package is then, then live in the car. Um, beginner's package, was it, right? <laughs> beginner's driving mode. Beginner's yeah. driving mode. <laughs> I need to recall that because I have a 16 and 17 year old, so um, same, same concerns. Yeah. Um, uh, what is special about this, this trust and security element and how you brought it into the car? Because if I imagine your nephew driving with your car and driving, refueling, paying, maybe going for a long ride, um, or my, my kids uh, going forward, or in a car sharing world where we change cars, mm -hmm. um, how do I actually, uh, when, it may, when I make it simpler, ensure that I still have the same level of trust, security, uh, the car knows it's me using it, not somebody else? Mm. Okay. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, first of all, um, to use all the services um, um, in the Mercedes-Benz ecosystem, you need a Mercedes Me ID. Um, this is something like uh, you maybe know as an, uh, from, from the Apple world as an Apple ID, so it's your unique account. And um, you register your cars with this Mercedes Me ID and um, you always have to authenticate. So when you use your car, your car asks you um, with which ID you would like to drive and you need to authenticate. And um, once you authenticated yourself with the car, uh, you have access to all the services within the Mercedes Me world and as well uh, to your payment data, which, can, which you can store also at your Mercedes Me ID, which means um, that we store it at, at, as Mercedes Pay in, in our databases. And um, if you want to do this native in car payment, you need to bind your payment data, which is basically credit card data, once to your car. And technically, uh, um, it is stored um, encrypted as so called token. Um, um, so that um, the data is not readable for anyone, only readable for the acquirer and the issuer who know the data anyway. Um, and so therefore you, and, and you need for sure your fingerprint in order to authorize the payment. And therefore it's the same security level as you know from, um, for example, Apple Pay. And um, these are frameworks, uh, the credit card um, providers uh, provide and um, we even let audit externally if we integrated uh, these frameworks um, properly into our um, software. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe and, and just to add to that, it's, and maybe I'm getting overexcited here because I'm I'm a bit of a payment nerd, right? But the sort of seismic shift that that Stephanie was just elaborating on, it's sort of taking the payment experience which is traditionally associated with the check out from a location, from an interaction, is taking that to a, the closer and closer to the check in to, of, of the sort of interaction of the location. Um, certainly, uh, you know, when you interact with the, with the vehicle, we still need some sort of interaction at the check out with the fingerprint, but that, that too is evolving. So I find that tremendously exciting. If you look at this from a global perspective as well, and, and I mean, you're also all global yeah, in, 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 in terms of enabling and serving markets, uh, but from a, from a MasterCard perspective of enabling digital payments globally, um, I presume there is a question about how you perceive the challenges specific to in-car payments, which is a little bit what we have just discussed, but also an interest, as, as uh, the intro video showed, of enabling wider urban mobility payments. Where are the biggest challenges in those two areas from your perspective? Yeah, I think so. Let's let's take them one by one, and then probably Uli can chime in also on on one part of that. So I think in the sort of in-car space, um, you know, we've, it's been alluded to before by Kilian in the conversation. It's 
on the one hand, we're taking a lot of components that we already know in payments and making them accessible to drivers in the sense that they are now able to initiate a payment. The other side of the ecosystem, which it has taken MasterCard to build 60 years, you know, we, we've reached 100 million acceptance point worldwide in 60 years. That's sort of the merchant side of the ecosystem. So what use cases are available and where can I pay from my vehicle and with my vehicle? I think that's sort of, you know, more sort of your, the building side that you're worrying about. Um, if we think about sort of urban mobility more broadly, already today, four billion transactions globally are processed on the MasterCard network that relate to uh, urban mobility. And, and that includes things that, um, like public transport, for instance. So it's not just thing, huge things like transport for London, but we've recently also signed contracts with, with capital cities like Budapest and Ljubljana um, in Europe and Regensburg in, in Germany, which taken together will enable another 2.5 million people People to simply use their bank card as their transport credential just by tapping and initiating a contactless transaction and then there is a lot of fancy stuff that happens in the back end. Um, so that's just one, one further step in the right direction. Ultimately, it's sort of uh, the big challenge because that's what you were really asking for and I'm conscious that I'm giving a very long-winded answer here. I think ultimately it's, it's a um, change in the ecosystem that requires the collaboration of both sides. The side that enables consumers to pay and the side that enables um, recipients of payments to accept those payments. Uh, and that's always complex because all of them have different IT infrastructures and, and hardware requirements. Um, so we need to really work together uh, to make this happen. Yeah. But Uli, I don't I mean, know add, adding to this, yes, I mean, I think what, what we see now is that there's more and more focus coming on in-car payments from the OEM side and also from big credit card companies like MasterCard. And um, at the same time, we at Ride are building up this ecosystem also on the merchant side, as, as Peter said. And of course, we see that we are, we are gaining traction here and there's more and more interest uh, as we are also um, having more and more transactions in this space. So uh, we think this is coming and it's also um, important to see, for example, the fingerprint solution that uh, Steffi already mentioned. Uh, the processes for in-car payments need to be frictionless or seamless. If the process is complicated, there will not be a lot of adoption. Yeah? But we see once the processes are, are, are improving, are more customer friendly and easier, we see adoption rates increasing heavily. And we believe that fueling or car wash or charging, it's, it's just the beginning. We also see that uh, in the future, we will, we will also link in-car payments to public transportation, for example, or other mobility services. And even at a later point, uh, we see also the potential to, to bring in just regular merchants. You think about booking your hotel out of the car. This might seem far away, but uh, it also seemed far away 10 years ago what you're doing on your smartphone right now. Yeah? And um, we really believe in, in this transformation from vehicle-related services to then adding mobility services and then basically adding regular merchants to the in-car experience. And adding one point on your question regarding global. I think global is a quite, quite big word. I would be really lucky if you have at least that on a European level, because it's <laughs> tricky to have the same experience in Germany, then in France, then in Netherlands and things like that, because markets are so not aligned when it comes to regulation, when it comes to the different market players. Yeah? You have gatekeepers in all of the markets you need to attract. Some of them are open to new things, some of them are not open to new things. And I think that's the biggest challenge. Yeah? So, and then this is that we are not talking about Germany and China or Germany and US, we talk about Germany and France. Uh, that's not the case, that's not aligned. Uh, also from a bank perspective, you will not find a large issuing bank who is active in Europe. There is no one. Uh, that means you need mm -hmm. to deal with a lot of players and that makes, makes it cumbersome and then adding a lot of scrutiny to, to develop such things like in-car payments or mobility driven payments. Is that the bigger challenge or is, are we the bigger challenge <laughs> activating all of us as users? I, mean, I'll, I'll, I can ask the question. I think you, there's, no, there's no one or the other side because it needs to fit together. The more the market is aligned, the more the user experience is the same here than in other countries. The easier it is it to educate the end consumer, the easier it is to transport it because mm. you, cannot, you cannot communicate as that. In Germany, it works like this. You need these fingerprint, blah, blah, blah. In France, it works like this. In the Netherlands, uh, they don't want to use cards and things like that. That is, that is not working. Uh, and I think that's the challenging thing. I think, I, I mean, I, I 
I agree. <laughs> the, I think the more OEMs are jumping on in-car payments on, on, on this trend, the more pressure will be on energy companies and mobility services to really come to the table. And then, and then this, will, this will really scale. Yeah, I think we are at the beginning right now, but we see already that it's, it, it's the beginning. Yeah, and it's starting right now, and it's important to, to be a first mover, as, for example, Mercedes and MasterCard are. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to be honest, if you, ask, you know, had asked me five years ago, uh -huh. hey, isn't it the coolest thing ever that we sort of have metal cards being issued to people? I would have said, you're crazy. Why? It's expensive. <laughs> it does the same thing that a normal card does. What do I need that for? But you know, I, clearly, I would have been wrong. So I think just sort of having the, um, uh, let's say, offering the supply side available to the consumer may ultimately create its own demand. And I believe that we're really offering a service here all together as we sit here uh, in this panel. That is relevant. And, and then people will start to use it if we do our job right. But Stefanie, you have described the service in a way with a Mercedes Me login and then a certain way it works within a Mercedes. But if I, if I heard both of you, there was also a little call about it should work the same if I go to other use cases, yeah, urban mobility, commerce, etc. Does it also need to work roughly the same across all car brands or not? Will it be unique or not? That is my question. <laughs> um, so I, I hope uh, that other car brands also um, enable in-car payment and make it easy for the customers. That's what we do. We are always thinking the processes from, from the customer, put ourselves in the customer's shoes and think about what would they like to purchase directly from in-car and um, how can we ease the process as much as possible because you um, gave an imagination of all the complexity which is behind that, but that should be uh, invisible for the customers. And um, you are absolutely right. So we are now live in Germany with uh, this native in-car payment and we strive for rolling that out over all European countries which need this set second factor authorization and um, also into other use cases and as you said I think we are just at the beginning so who of us could have imagined 15 years ago what a smartphone means to us as of today I mean 15 years ago we bought a an, an mobile phone in order to telephone and now we organize our whole life with this little piece of hardware and this fabulous software on it and I think we are at the beginning of a very similar um, development uh, with the car. So there is no limits to imagination what we would like to do with our cars in the future. So me, I couldn't have imagined three years ago that I would um, pay my role at the bakery with my smartphone. And now I'm going out uh, without any money in my pocket, and that should be, will be the same um, when, with all the services related to the car you would like to purchase directly from your car. And you, even if you forget your mobile phone, um, you just want to use your car for these purchases. Mm -hmm. And so it, the car is a payment device. Yeah. And to be honest, if you know, talk about what, what is the future in terms of platforms and proprietary versus interoperable. I mean, the future ultimately must be interoperable. I think experience has shown that that's the only thing that works. But experience also shows that if you think too big in the beginning and you start to sort of find the, let's say, global solution for everything, you will never really make get anything done. I mean, you need to start somewhere. And, and so, you know, having this sort of forward thinking and, and true innovation that's coming from, yeah. for instance, Mercedes, I think that's the right spark. Yeah. Yeah, it's not discuss a standard for 10 years, but actually provide a solution <laughs> and then standardize. Yeah, um, and, and it's really the question is really is really the trigger. Can I use the same experience in a different car brand or is the discussion? Can I use what I experience in yeah, the car in different settings. use cases when it comes to whatever bikes, public transport, airlines, whatever it is. And that's are the different yeah. dimensions. You can you can argue about what is the most need for the end consumer. Kilian. We, you, you described your role as bank before as an element that is simply needed because somebody needs to accept and take the risk and accept the authorization yeah, or authentication and then authorize the payment. But you had merchant solutions for Deutsche Bank, which is the other side, not the issuing side, not the acceptance side, not the, not the, not the, 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 the consumer side, but actually the merchant side. 
What else can you provide to the development of in-car payments or mobility payments or beyond um, as, a, as a bank out of this role? Yeah, I think, as, as stated before, you always need two sides. Huh? And the role from an acceptance point of view, and by the way, Merchant Solutions in Deutsche includes also Ichim, but that's a little bit a strange naming thing, um, is that you also need to bring the merchants into the car, not only the consumer. Huh? So the merchant needs to come into the car. The merchant could be a booking site, could be a content site, could be a travel-related stuff, but could be also a retailer. Eh? And, and playing that role and helping them to say, okay, hey, here's a new touch point. Eh? It's a new touch point for your customers. Eh? If you are not there, somebody else will be there. And I believe that this is a, a really, really valuable touch point for a lot of businesses. Also, a lot of businesses who have nothing to do with mobility at all, eh? but um, have something to do with uh, bringing services to the end consumer. Eh? And just, just imagine how many hours people are spending in vehicles, on bikes, on whatever. This is, this is a time for merchants to selling products to the end consumers. And this is what, where we want to help, at least from a bank tech perspective. I think, I think this is what Kilian says is exactly true for an OEM. The benefits for the OEM are clear. You can provide additional services. You always have this link to the customer. You can also collect data that is interesting also for the OEM and, and, and others to offer additional services. Yeah. So um, I think this is clear for, um, for the OEM. And also you, you improve your customer relationship. You even have a login effect as we have in, in smartphones. Yeah. I mean, I would not think about switching from my Apple iPhone to an un another phone because I'm too lazy to do all yeah. this. Yeah. And the same will happen in automotive when we have more in-car payments. People get used to it, and you can really lock in your customer to Mercedes or whoever is, is using in-car payments. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. but those benefits are, are, are very clear. Um, I think two, two, two questions, um, uh, one to Peter and, and, and one more, Uli, to you. Uh, on the acceptance opportunity, I mean, uh, you described that you will have, actually the car becomes a point of sale, marketplace, whatever you want to call it, when you book uh, your uh, hotel as well out of the car, for instance. Uh, is this a key driver also why you want to enable it or is it just more driving more payments or is it also a different way or different model of, of doing business that, that is of interest? Um, both and, I would say. I mean, if, if those of you who are following the payment space a little bit will have noticed that MasterCard has long ceased to be a provider of funny plastic cards that can pay, right? I mean, we've sort of expanded across the value chain of payments um, all the way from sort of safety and security to uh, some value-added services for, for consumers and everything in between. And sort of playing that more tangible role um, there in the ecosystem uh, as a provider of safe and secure payments, but also as a provider of, va of value-added services, that's our ambition. That's why we're in this space. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, so I understand the very clear business case that you just described. I mean, there's a clear business case for you, more payments in more places, more, uh, more, more touch points, consumer touch points. There is a clear business case uh, from, from Mercedes' point of view also. Uh, you can buy the app, you can upgrade your car, downgrade your car, whatever you want to do. Um, maybe share it as well and collect payments. I, I can imagine a whole world of, of, of additional revenue. Payments are uh, uh, margins in business, we know as well. I understand both of you earn the thin margins on possibly many transactions. How, f how long is that route to get to that many transactions? Or is my assumption wrong or presumption wrong? No, uh, no your assumption is correct. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the route is, is long. Yeah, so it, it took uh, right now five to six years to, to build up all the, first of all, commercial contracts with, uh, with energy companies, uh, also um, connecting to their cashier systems, and uh, and this is complex work when you talk when you think about more than a hundred cashier systems used by energy companies across Europe. So this takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, and money. But at the end of the day, when you see that Mercedes is launching such services, other OEMs are about to launch such services, of course, everybody understands the potential that is in there. And uh, from our perspective, perspective, especially right, we are focused on vehicle-related services where there needs to be a platform in between to do all this work that I just, just mentioned. And, uh, and this is our, our spot where we are acting. And, um, 
And that makes it interesting because, as we see, we also have an, an own app, a ride app, and we see that uh, transactions are increasing heavily, and uh, we think that this will, of course, come with the OEMs as well. Any business case expansion extensions that you yep. see as a bank? For us, the business case view is a little bit, little bit different than 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 Uli's is, yeah, because we look on two, two uh, on both sides of the story. Yeah. We want to enable our merchants to make more business. They make also business through other channels. Uh, it's not uh, that they make in-car only or whatever. So we said, okay, the, the merchant makes more business, and it's an existing client of a bank, obviously. Uh, so that means the share of wallet with an existing client is becoming bigger. Uh, the same for the end consumer. Uh, so with, with our retail proposition, we have the end consumer. The end consumer has a payment instrument. Uh, they can use their card or whatever. Uh, so And they have now more chances to use the card. So for us, in-car payments is an upselling case mm -hmm. for end consumers and for merchants. Uh, not a new business, an upselling case. And we think we need to enable this upselling because we believe overall that the mobility space where, where in-car payments is obviously part of is really, really growing when it comes to payments, especially non-cash payments. Um, and uh, as a bank, uh, you always want to be part of it because payments is a scalability game uh, and that provides a lot of chances for scaling it. And Stephanie, how important is the commerce aspect beyond the mobility-related payments uh, in your considerations around Mercedes Pay? The commerce as aspect. Um, so uh, to have those software packages where, where customers can personalize their car over the years or um, think of second market, so you buy your perfect um, used car, but something is missing, for example digital radio or some things like that. This is a complete new business for, for an OEM because we stay in touch with the customers over the life cycle of the cars. So in, in former times when we sold a manufactured car, we never have seen our um, customers again. So maybe they have been at a workshop that was in most cases not very lucky situations where they had to go there and so maybe we sold parts to workshops but not directly to the customer and now it's the first time with our digital services as well as with all the services we provide around the car like fueling parking and so on that we stay in touch with our customers and learn on one hand side to have a new revenue channel and on the other hand side, learn more about our customers, so what they prefer to do with their cars. And um, I think that's a, the part which is important for us as OEM, uh, to have a life cycle um, um, relationship with the customers. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is it's a positive one. Yeah? Because when you come to the workshop, it's mostly a negative one because yes, something is broken. Yeah? <laughs> uh, but uh, on the other side, you can generate a complete different use case in the context of communication with the end consumers during, during the whole life cycle, which is hard to calculate what the value is, uh, mm -hmm. but it is definitely a uh, Okay, so maybe some figures uh, on, on the value. So in 2022, uh, Mercedes-Benz Group had a revenue of uh, 1 billion euro already with mm -hmm. software services. Mm -hmm. And we expect by end of the decade a high single digit billion number of rev revenues um, only with software for cars. Mm -hmm. So just to have some numbers. Another number from, from a Juniper, Juniper study is that by 2026 we will see uh, 4.7 billion transactions uh, which have been done in car. So yeah. there is a potential in this market. Quite massive. Before I ask you about hurdles, I would like to open this up also for, for you, uh, for any questions. Uh, we have a microphone box. You raise your hand and please shoot your questions, should you have questions. Not yet, so you'll get the hurdles question first and you get your second chance after the hurdles. <laughs> so what are the hurdles for mainstream adoptions, the biggest ones that we still need to overcome? I think that goes to all of you. Maybe I, I start. I, I think, f from my opinion, it's it's the 
process the customer has to go through, where we now have a fingerprint solution in Mercedes, which will tremendously improve the, the process. Uh, and a, a service will never scale if you have to go through a complicated process with all kinds of things. So you have to, it has to be frictionless and smooth, and then this really has the opportunity to scale. So I think this is the biggest challenge. Um, and the second one is also maybe on our side, to really build up a huge accept acceptance network uh, to really, to really uh, increase the availability of, of fueling, EV charging, car wash, and also others. Yeah. Because if you only can fuel it at every fifth station across Europe, this won't be enough mm. um, to really also drive adoption. Mm -hmm. I think in the short term, you know, from our point of view, um, it's, it's the question of trust, ultimately. We've put in place a set of technologies and rules that allow it uh, for banks to trust car manufacturers with a specific use case along the payment journey in mind. And that use case is making sure that the person that is initiating the payment is the person that they pretend to be. Yeah, in payment jargon, we call that authentication. This trust that banks have to give to car manufacturers, that they are actually doing a good job, um, that is required. And I think there are all the ingredients there for it to be given. Because not only have we put in place the rules and technologies that make this possible with things like tokenization, but also Mercedes, as, as Stephanie was explaining previously, have made sure and even externally audited their technologies specifically with that trustworthiness in mind. And that now needs to take off, and this is where we focus a lot of our work. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest, the biggest hurdle is on the one side education of the end consumers, that to, to tell them why should they, because everybody can wash his or her car, everybody can fuel, everybody can charge. Uh, why should they do that differently? Uh, and that's a, that's a long yeah. journey to educate and to motivate and set the right triggers that people are changing their behavior, that there is added value. Sometimes you need to force it, sometimes you need to motivate it and things like that. And I think that's the biggest struggle. I think the tech thing can, can be solved uh, in the back. That's tech work. Uh. That's complex tech work, but it's uh, solvable. The education is much broader and at the end also really, really expensive. Uh, and you need really a strong motivation behind that to educate everybody to pay out of his or her car. Yeah. I mean, ad adding to th this, if I look at this E-Class over there, which has basically, I don't know, a hundred uh, things you can do with it, mm -hmm. and then payments is just one. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And this is also the challenge, as, as Kilian said, really, yeah, educate the customer that it's something you can do when he has all these choices and he might not even use all the all those things that this car can do for you. Yeah. What is the killer use case? The killer use case? That, that will flip customers around? <coughs> I think um, the fueling use case is a quite good use case because um, um, digital services you buy uh, maybe once a year for your, for your car, to be honest. So um, um, mm -hmm. once you have buy this beginner's driver's package, you don't need to buy it again. But fueling is something you do on a regular basis, maybe weekly, maybe bi-weekly, and this is a very good use case just to get used to those processes. And um, I think you, you already said it, um, the one, one thing is user experience, so make payments as seamless and invisible as possible for the customer so that there is no effort for, for, for paying. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is trust, and um, especially as Mercedes, uh, um, we are investing heavily in, in security in order to keep the trust of our customers we have traditionally as Mercedes. Mm -hmm. I would bet more on charging, because charging is a new use case. Uh, fueling, people learned how to fuel our cars in 100 years. Uh, go to the petrol station, fuel it, and things like that. To convince them that they should change it, even if it's only in small pieces, it's a harder thing. Uh, charging, they all need to learn, because it's new for a lot of people, and to learn it the right way is maybe easier than to change the behavior. I have to jump in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ma maybe you're right. No, no, I, think, I, th I think you're right. At the same time, I think fueling is a great case, because it has the frequency as, as yeah. to get people used to it. But I also think 
I think the, the killer use cases would be more uh, car wash and parking, where the pain for the customer is mm. quite heavy, I would say. Mm. Yeah? Even parking, if you have to always go to this thing and um, put your phone there or your card, it's much easier just to, to click. Yeah. Yeah? And I think here the, the customer pain is, is, is quite high. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's all these use cases where you really have convenience. As you said, parking, so we all already have um, 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 the parking use case in car, so yeah. you don't need to go to, to this uh, parkometer and, and look for your coins and uh, you always have not enough, uh, but just uh, start the parking in the car and pay for it in the car. And, and fueling, I think it's also very convenient mm -hmm. not, uh, not to be forced to go into the store and queue up in a line at the cashier, but just pay for it. Mm. But let's ask the audience maybe by just raising your hands. Who has already paid out of the car for fueling or parking, for instance? Ah, a few. Woo! After yeah. this, who is going to do it? <laughs> a bit of convincing work still to be done or activation work. Um, and uh, if I may ask, is electric charging the most important use case? Okay. Or any of the others? Some of the others. Okay, so it's still there's still some room to be explored and discovered over the next years. I understand. Again, any questions from from you? Here. Hello. Th thank you very much for for the very very interesting presentation. First of all, but I would have a question for Stephanie. Uh, a bit tighter. Is it okay? Yeah. All right. Um, you mentioned about uh, trust and data security, and we had a discussion about software-based uh, data security. Is there any hardware in the car that makes sure that the information that is input stays or is protected in the car? Is also okay. hardware-related? So I, <clears throat> I can pay about uh, I can talk about payment data uh, as I'm Mercedes Pay, um, and um, therefore on, on the one hand side um, we are a kind of payment gateway and we store um, um, payment data in our databases and therefore uh, we are certified at the, uh, with the credit card standard PCI DSS and we have chosen to let us certify with the um, strongest level. Um, um, although we were not required to do so, um, but uh, we said, okay, the better safe than sorry. And so um, we have an audit every year regarding uh, data uh, security um, in, in our systems and processes. And on the other hand side, we use uh, those frameworks which, which enable this so-called uh, delegated authentication with a tokenization of credit card data. And these are frameworks which are provided from our credit card uh, um, um, companies. And um, we let us audit that we use those frameworks properly so that uh, uh, we ensure the highest level of security for our customers because we want them to feel as secure as you feel when you sit in your Mercedes and close the door with a soft plop and <laughs> you feel secure and you should feel as secure with the payment uh, services we provide. Is this a concern from a scheme's perspective? You, you manage the level of risk that is in the system. Yeah, because there's always some fraud, but you manage it. Is that a concern or are there other areas which are of bigger concern? There, there is no reason at all for, for concern because we have solved the problem of fraud risk to the extent that it is reasonably solvable already for um, payments where the consumer is not directly present at the merchant location. Yeah, we call them cardinal present payments. That is solved by virtue of technology such as, for instance, tokenization, which is nothing else than replacing the real card data, which I could potentially use to commit fraud, by a cryptographic value that is useless, except for the merchant that is the recipient of that payment. Um, so no, there is no reason for concern. We have another question. Yeah, I, I had exactly the same question, funnily, as my predecessor. So you confirm there is no hardware security, no secure element involved in the whole uh, system, right? 
ultimately it's a question of philosophy. If you look at an iPhone next to an Android phone, the philosophy is completely different. All right. um, and, and to be honest, it will be up to the individual OEM to decide that. There is no inherent advantage in the one over the other because the sort of scheme tokenization technology that we offer is already providing a layer of security um, that is sort of uh, you know taking care of that. Um, but whatever philosophical choice, let's say, the hardware providers make is fine with us as long as it is certified. Okay. So MasterCard is open to whatever solution. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh, I bring it. Ah, I didn't see it. Sorry. I throw it. I throw it. Throw it. Yeah. <laughs> really? Thank you. Nicht gesehen. In terms of payment, uh, how do you want to pay by fingerprint, by bin code, or by uh, face recognition? That was really hard to understand. Sorry. Can you can you hold it closer a little bit? Yeah. Uh, how do you want to pay by uh, face recognition, fingerprint, or pin code? Still didn't get to it. whom is that question directed? Fa face recognition. How do you want to pay? Face recognition, pin code, other ah. means of. Okay. You have the finger right now. I think, I, I mean, I'll, I'll make a start, right? I don't know to whom the question was directed, but I think, and, and hopefully I speak for all of us, we don't care. As long <laughs> as it's sort of safe and secure, um, you know, we don't care. And biometrics is by far the most uh, secure uh, means of authentication that we have available right now. And, and probably ultimately what will be on offer in the car, you have to ask Steffi. Yeah, sure. So, um, um, as of now, we have this fingerprint sensor, which has uh, the right security level for the uh, authentication. And um, as soon as um, the cameras in the Mercedes-Benz cars are at, uh, at that level three, we need for um, this authentication. Um, it will be we will be also uh, provide uh, a face recognition. But um, as of now, I can't tell a timeline when this will be available. So as of now, it's fingerprint. But as you said, um, um, if you have a biometric authentication, fingerprint, uh, voice, uh, or face recognition, it's all of the same security level. You only need the devices in the car which can do this authentication. What I think is, is that, that the authentication method and the payment will be decoupled in the future because there are a lot of use cases in the car where you need authentication but maybe not a payment no? and the other way around and I think that is that is where the, where the story will go. You will be identified to whatever reason when you enter the car you knowing that's Steffi, that's Peter, that's Uli eh? and then payment will be invisible and a lot of other things will also be invisible because everybody already knows okay this is uh, Guy X Y Z, and I think that is that is how I see the case. In the pre-discussion, I thought it would be the car detecting me by weight on the seat, seat position, and driving style. But let's see whether <laughs> this comes. We have one more question. That's the last one we can take on the end. I'll bring you the microphone. Can you? Oops, oh, sorry. Uh, no, I'm not perfect. Um, uh, Robin X uh, Mercedes colleague actually um, I have a question um, this is a little bit more technical but um, in, in payments mobile payments um, there's always a discussion around how much security do you put into the hardware and how much will live in the say software um, Stephanie how do you perceive this um, uh, from the Mercedes Bay perspective when working together let's say with MasterCard or other, um, let's say, credit card institutions? Yeah, so on the one hand side, for sure, we have this uh, fingerprint sensor, which is uh, part of the car and which does the authentication, obviously a piece of hardware which works together with um, the um, um, car software. And on the other hand side, we have this whole infrastructure we need for, uh, for this authentication topics uh, for the payments <laughs> and this is as far as I am informed uh, software based thank you for your questions I have four quick questions for each of you maybe controversial I don't know you will tell me Stephanie card or paying directly from the account card or paying directly from my car um, card because it's globally available. 
and we have all these security mechanisms um, already developed. So that sounds like you're safe, Peter, but maybe you're not. Uh, international cards or domestic cards? Gyro card? I think that the answer is pretty obvious, right? The, the ecosystem and the challenges that we're looking to solve here are complicated enough as it is. So let's please not make our lives more complicated than they already are by worrying about divergent, non-aligned, legacy, local standards. <laughs> the only way forward is international card schemes on this. <laughs> Uli, you, I mean, you, you laid out a little bit your, your use cases, but uh, if I look five years into the future, will you do payments around mobility or will you do much more as right? Uh, I, I think over the next five years, we are happy if we really scale the vehicle related services. Yeah? And if you achieve this, we're looking into this, yes. Mm -hmm. And Kilian, also a little bit, five years plus. Currently, I use my bank to pay. Will I not use my bank to pay anymore and just use Mercedes or any other merchant? You will always use your bank to pay in different roles, but the bank will always have mm -hmm. a role in that game. So you're less concerned about the front end than about the back end stickiness. Yeah. My final question to each of you is, um, what is the, the one thing that will make this successful going forward? Uli, my for me, it's a seamless experience. Hmm? The added value for the user. Added value, seamless experience, added value. Same, seamless, um, comfortable user journey. Mm -hmm. For me, it's collaboration between players like us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this collaborative panel. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, we are still around if you have any questions uh, and wishing you a great continuation of this day and experience here. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you also from my side. And I think maybe you can get a coffee on the other side. And so if you want to connect, I think you can find them all here. One more minute. Um, we will continue on this stage at 3 p.m. with um, Alles auf E, die Transformation, hosted by Electric Car. Um, we have guests from Bundesverband E-Mobility, Keba and iways. So um, I think it will be interesting as well. Um, and find yourself a seat or a swing and until then enjoy our coffee bar thanks thank you